Cathedral, please remember to check the fire arrangements and check where your nearest uh, exit is. And we meet under the canopy at Waitrose. Can you check, please, that your mobile phones are either switched off or on silent? And can you check that your card, if you have one, is pressed firmly into the console? I know as well, I looked at you, Councillor oh, Frost. I'm sorry. Uh, can you do that? Yeah. Right. Um, I don't have to say anything about the type of meeting we have, but I will introduce the officers. So if one of you could put on your microphone, it should work. Uh, so opposite me, more or less, is Lewis Jones from the legal department, Jeanette Walsh, who is our interim uh, head of development control, Steve Tester, who's here to speak on the tree item, as he is one of our tree officers, Kaylee Taylor, are you a principal planning officer? I do get confused. Or a mere planning officer. And <laughs> we'll work on that principle. And uh, Louise Yandel, who's the area team leader for Southern and Western. So welcome all. Uh, can we move on to the main items of business then? Uh, the minutes of the last meeting, they have been laid on the table. Are you happy that I signed them as an accurate record? Agreed. Uh, and apologies for absence, Emma. Uh, we have apologies from councillors Jill Hargreaves, Martin Lear, Andy McLeod, Julia Potts and John Ward. Thank you. Thank you very much. And do we have any declarations of interest? Uh, none before the meeting, but I imagine Farnham Town Councillors declare a non-pecuniary interest. So does anyone have an interest that doesn't include those? Uh, any questions from the members of the public, uh, Emma? None this evening, Chairman. And Jeanette, do you have any uh, relevant updates yeah. to give us this evening? Fine, thank you very much. In which case, we will move straight on to um, quite an unusual item for us just recently. Uh, we have an objection to the making of a tree preservation order on an area of trees on land at Pear Tree Cottage, 45 Shortheath Road, Farnham. We have to consider our objection, and Steve Tester is going to talk us through this recommendation, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, this presentation is regarding the decision of whether to confirm with or without modification the Tree Preservation Order 02 of 2017, following an objection made by an interested party. The order was served on the 26th of June of this year and uses an area designation which was placed on and protects all trees at the address of 45 Short Heath Road in Farnham. The order was served following concern raised by a local resident regarding a planning application being submitted, which was for the redevelopment of the property of 45 Short Heath Road, Farnham. It is the tree officer's view that the planning application paid no heed to the presence of mature trees on site. Officers are therefore of the view that this order is expedient to protect all trees on site to enable the trees to be considered as a material consideration to the development of the site. This is because it is deemed that there is foreseeable threat posed to the trees of public community value, as indicated by the submitted application for the redevelopment of the property into two houses. An objection to the order has been made by the executives of the property, who are also in this instance the applicants for the proposed development. The objection was based on the grounds that the use of the area protection does not enable representations on specific trees to be made and that this approach is therefore unreasonable and inappropriate in a residential area. It was hoped by officers during the planning application process that by serving this order, the applicants would have and make uh, assessments on the impacts of the development on the trees and landscape and thereby make an informed assessment. Regrettably, it was the last week of October when a partial tree survey plan of the site was forwarded to Waverley, which you can now see on the screen behind me. The, uh, the plan submitted appears to recognise that 10 trees within 20 metres of the road are required to be felled to enable the current proposal to proceed. No trees at the rear of the property have been identified in the current plans, so we're uncertain what the future would entail with those trees as well. Uh, before I proceed further, I'd like to show you some photos of the site. This is a view from looking from southwest towards the site. 
from the south east of the road looking uh, towards the site. The trees are positioned just to the left of that photo. This is the front of the site taken from across the road looking into the property. And you can see the backdrop of trees behind the current property there at the moment. And this is another photo taken across the road with the trees in the front curtilage of the property in clear view in the photo. In conclusion, the use of an area tree preservation order is considered expedient, an expedient approach in this instance to ensure the trees on site remain a material consideration. The area category is intended for short term protection in an emergency measure and is one way of protecting trees dispersed over an area such as this property. It is the officer's view that the objection raised against making of the order in its current form does not override the public community value of the trees. Therefore, it's the officer's recommendation to this committee that the Tree Preservation Order 02 of 2017 for trees on land at Pear Tree Cottage, 45 Short Heath Road, Farnham, be confirmed without modification. I thank you for your time on this matter and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Steve. I'm sure there will be questions, but I think the third bullet point is very important on those determining issues, that the order can be reviewed when redevelopment of the property has been fully considered. So, you know, we are dealing with uh, an order that may have a temporary nature, but is there to protect this, this land at the moment. So, questions for Steve, please, or anything else anyone wishes to raise? Councillor Hyman? Yes, I... Um, I can understand exactly why the uh, officers have um, considered this uh, expedient. I, I appreciate what they're doing because um, you know, we, we, we could be in a completely different situation looking at a development where everything's been chopped down and we'd be quite annoyed about it. But, um, is there a precedent for this? I just want to know. I mean, there's obviously a threat as the executor is, a, is solicitors. There is a threat of legal action. Is there some sort of precedent? Or we, we, we're quite safe in this, are we? There's no... Um, there's no risk in this. I'll get the officers to answer, but we used to get a lot of tree preservation objections. We just haven't had them recently. So uh, would you like to just confirm that we're doing, we're behaving lawfully? Um, I'm not aware of a precedent myself, um, but I do note that my, my legal colleague, Barry Devlin, has provided um, his comments in the legal implications section of the report um, there is certainly no mention in there of any risks um, that he's identified and I, I would support his comments um, thank you chair Does anyone else wish to comment okay, councillor frost you know we do get, we'll get an opportunity to review this when the redevelopment takes place so I think we should go ahead and actually make the order I'm a great believer in protecting our trees I'm not sure what value the four Scots pines have because they all looked a bit spindly um, but I do think that we should protect our trees and particularly in that area because it's got lots of trees in that area and then when it comes to the redevelopment of the property and we consider it in full then maybe we change our minds but at the moment I'm in favour of it Thank you, Councillor Frost. I think those of us who know Short Heath Road and drive along it uh, frequently understand it's very, very green as you go along. This is going slightly away from the very, very green parts, but it is a well-treed road and, and it would be uh, um, difficult to see it without uh, the trees. Does anybody else wish to comment before we move to the recommendation? In that case, we'll move to the, the recommendation, which is that the Tree Preservation Order 02-2017 applying to an area of trees at Pear Tree Cottage, Short Heath Road, Farnham, be confirmed without modification. Can I see all those members in favour, please? Uh, that's unanimous. Thank you very much, and thank you, Steve. Thank you. Right, moving on to... Uh, the next item on the agenda, B1, the erection of a single-storey extension following demolition of existing extension, erection of an outbuilding to provide log store and garden room following demolition of existing outbuilding, 
as amended by plans received on the 9th of the 11th, 17, at Lorde House Farm, Odium Road, Farnham. Uh, there are two uh, applications, obviously, associated with this, because there is a listed building application as well. We're going to deal with the first one and then see how much detail we need to go into the second one. So, uh, Kayleigh, please, if you'd like to introduce this to us. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. These applications have been brought before the Area Committee as the agent is an elected councillor. Since the preparation of the committee agenda, there's been one letter of representation received from the Farnham Society for both applications. This letter raises objection to the proposed extensions in terms of design and impact on the listed, listed building, but does not object to the proposed outbuilding. Officers consider that this letter of objection does not alter the considerations outlined within the officer reports and does not affect the officer recommendations. The application site is located to the south of Odium Road, adjacent the Folly Hill Junction. The application site comprises a detached Grade 2 listed building, a large garage and workshop and outbuildings. Planning permission is sought for the erection of a single storey extension and a wall following the demolition of the existing extension, which is just shown. Yeah, um, and uh, the erection of an outbuilding to provide a log store and garden room following the demolition of an existing outbuilding just further north here. This photograph shows the front elevation of the existing dwelling. The existing extension to be demolished can be seen just here. And these photographs show the other elevations of the dwelling. And again, the single store extension is just here. <coughs> this photograph shows the existing outbuildings on the site, which are to be retained. Um, the building to the right um, is the garage and workshop approved under application WA 2012 0907. This slide shows the existing outbuilding to be demolished as part of the proposal. Um, behind this structure, there is a brick and stone boundary wall with the Folly Hill Junction behind. This slide shows the proposed floor plans. Um, the proposed single store extension and wall can be seen here, and the log store and garden room here. Um, this slide shows the front elevation of the dwelling, showing the single storey extension and wall. And this slide shows the proposed side elevations. This slide shows the proposed southern and western, western elevations of the outbuilding. And this slide shows the eastern and northern elevations of the outbuilding, which, which can be seen above the boundary wall when viewed from Folly Hill and Odium Road. The matters of technical opinion for the planning application are the effect on the integrity of the SPA and the impact on ancient woodland and trees. The matters for judgment are the impact on the countryside beyond the green belt, landscape and visual amenity, the impact on the listed building and the impact on residential amenity. The recommendation is that planning permission be granted as set out on pages 29 to 31 of the agenda. Thank you, Kayleigh. Um, members? Councillor Hyman? Yes, um, I mean, the, the advice from our officers looks good. I don't see anything um, to, to object to in this at all, that, uh, that anybody would. It's, um, obviously, we wouldn't want it to be able to be used for residential purposes in the future by other people, but I think that's captured in the conditions. So um, I'm quite happy with this, and unless somebody comes up with something I've missed, then uh, and I, uh, see, as far as historically, as, as our um, historic buildings, uh, um, the department are quite happy with it as well. I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hyman. Councillor Frost? 
Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I'm happy with the decision, and, and I will support granting. But when we saw one of the previous photographs, there were lots of building materials there. Back one, back two, right, that's it, stop there. Had they already started this? Um, it's my understa understanding that it, they haven't started the development um, at all. You can still see um, the existing extension in the front there. I understand they're just doing some refurbishment works. Okay. Thank you. Does any other councillor wish to comment on this? Or should, oh, Councillor Fraser? <coughs> the comments I would wish to make <coughs> are all but one uh, to do with its listing. So that will be most appropriate for the next. I think so, Councillor yeah. Fraser, yes. One, the one point that isn't to do with the listing is the fact that <coughs> both the anticipated entry hall and the adjacent utility room have flat roofs and flat roof lights, which is contrary, as I understand it, to the Council's guidelines. It is not apparent from the drawings in the agenda because we do not have a plan that shows it. Uh, can you just tell me which guidelines you're referring to? Well, we have a, a, a house extension guidelines. I think the SPD guidelines that say that flat roofs are not favoured and that pitch roofs are. I think perhaps the officers would like to come back and explain that one. Thank you, Louise. Yeah, the, in our residential extensions guidelines, it does say that gen, generally flat roofs um, aren't, aren't favoured and pitched roofs are more encouraged. But of course, every site has to be assessed on its own merits. Um, and in this particular instance, we have looked at the design, particularly in relation to the, the listed building, and have concluded that the design is acceptable and appropriate um, in this instance. Um, and just regarding your comments about the listed building, um, I would make those now um, because, of course, the impact on the listed building is a material consideration for the planning application as well. Um, so if you have other comments to raise, then, then I would say so now. Just before I take you, if you wish to say any more, as Councillor Isher would have just pointed out, they do have restricted sort of windows in this one, which would make, you know, getting, making the... If you tried to make a high pitch roof there, you'd be obscuring the windows. So, you know, as, as Louise has said, you have to look at each particular uh, building and site. I, to be I agree with that. So, OK, Councillor Fraser, you want to come back? That, but it's not impossible, but it would mean a change of the plan. <clears throat> but that's another point. I was just going to say, we have to say this every week to you, I think, Councillor Fraser. We are looking at what's there and we're determining what's with, in front of us. With your permission, shall I make my other points concerning the listing of the building? Well, as we all know, I think in Farnham, I think all Farnham, we don't have that many grade two listed buildings in Upper Hale, uh, and we don't have many buildings of local merit either. But this is a listed grade two building, and we consider it very important. We put great importance upon it. Uh, the history of the Law Day farmhouse is extensive and it goes back to a previous building on the site which is irrelevant to this but I won't go into it but it is my opinion having read this very carefully that we are doing harm to the grade two listed building this um, series of extensions uh, intrude into the setting of the building, which is part of the consideration we should be making for a listed building. And I can't see any convincing justification for that harm. And there's certainly no discernible public benefit. Uh, the porch and utility extension, I believe, is in conflict with the vernacular style of the house, which is early Georgian, if not earlier. And I have form the opinion that this extension looks very strange and could be described as a Victorian pastiche. It is in visual conflict with the heritage asset, although 
Rich pointed out that the heritage asset that is considered most of value is around the corner. But you see in the elevations, as illustrated in the photographs, I would consider anything built close to this house would be of relevance to that listing. It has no distinctive local character at all. It's, it's of a, a, a sort of pseudo-Gothic Victorian style, which is inappropriate. Relevant to the Logstone Garden Room is the recent construction under 2012-09-07, the garage and workshop, which I thought, when I saw it being erected, was a splendid building built in a very workmanlike way. The rebuilding of the boundary wall, incorporation of the pillar box, the materials used, the colour, the texture, the size, everything was appropriate. It must be that these latest buildings are designed by someone else with a lesser touch, but we're not allowed to really comment on architecture. But it's my opinion that the Logstone Garden Room have a cumulative effect and they are disproportionate in total to the environment around the building. I'm not convinced that there is justification to do such harm to the setting of this listed building. And I would urge my fellow councillors to look very critically at it, whilst at the same time bearing in mind the opinion of our historic buildings officer and planning department, I think in this particular instance it's a balanced decision and my opinion is on the other side of the balance. So I will be opposing this. Thank you Councillor Fraser. Councillor Hodge? Thank you Chairman. Um, I couldn't disagree with uh, Councillor Fraser more, to be honest. The old extension, if you look at the picture, is actually a modern addition. It's not really that in keeping with the building. But the, the new extension, design-wise, certainly is. Um, so I'm fully intending to support, support the application. That looks much better to me. Fits the building well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hodge. Uh, you want to come back, Councillor Frost? Or have you not spoken? Well, we're, we're talking about that listing. Well, it, it, so, we'll have to make two separate recommendations, but yes, I mean, it's obviously a planning meeting. You know, we have to consider the heritage aspect as well. Yeah, uh, that's really what I want to talk about, is that one. I mean, again, I will be supporting a recommendation, but when you look at the pictures, I always understood that if you had a modern extension that was attached to a listed building, that modern extension always became part of the listed building and was therefore listed. So even if you build an extension tomorrow, it is part of the listed building, therefore it is listed. Okay. Yeah, that, that's correct. Um, however, what I would add to that is that um, obviously the significance of that building lies in its um, more historic parts rather than that 20th century edition. I understand edition. that, but what has... A I, I'm really quite appalled when I see the, the extension here, which was the latest one. Because if you look at the windows of this conglomeration of building, they're all different. And they're really quite modern, which rather surprises me in a listed building. Because normally the listed building officer tut tuts if you put something in that doesn't look like it's part of the listed building. Have a look at the pictures and you'll see some quite modern double glazing in the building. Now, I'm going to support the recommendation, but I do think they have got to replace all the windows so that in fact, they are in keeping with the age of the listed building. So if it's a, if it's a Queen Anne listed building, I would expect the windows to reflect that. Not, and if you go back through some of these pictures, you will see that they've got, hang on there, look at that. And that, that is not a, a window in keeping with a listed building. 
They're all different. And I'm surprised the officers haven't picked that up and made some comment about it so that we get them at least all the same. Thank you, Chairman. So I'm not sure we can put all the wrongs of the past right with this application, but we can certainly raise it with the heritage officer as, as something we, you know, that we are concerned about. But in terms of this uh, particular application, I'm not sure we can ask it to put everything that's gone on in the past right. Am I correct in that? Um, yes, that's correct. Um, any restrict or requirements that we put on a proposal has to be relevant to the application um, and replacing windows in that southwestern side elevation, for example, um, wouldn't be relevant to the proposal that you're considering this evening. Um, so it wouldn't meet the, the tests for what um, could be applied by condition. Um, but we will certainly raise it with our um, listed buildings officer. And um, if something can be done about it, then we will certainly do something. Right, does anybody else wish to comment or shall we move straight to the first recommendation? Officers, you don't wish to add anything else? No. In which case, if we move to the recommendation, I don't think it's changed, has it? So the recommendation is that subject to uh, conditions one to four and informatives one to four, that permission be granted. Can I see all those in favour of granting permission? Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And those against? One. And any abstentions? In which case, should we move on to the uh, listed building application? And Kayleigh, again, you're going to uh, introduce this slightly more briefly, I gather. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, so, application WA 2017-1871 seeks listed building consent in association with the previously discussed scheme. Uh, the listed building consent is only required for the erection of the single-storey extension following the demolition of the existing extension. Uh, so the matters of judgment are the impact on the listed building. The recommendation is that listed building consent be granted as set out on pages 42 to 44 of the agenda. Does anyone wish to speak to this uh, application? In which case we move straight to the recommendation, which once again, is that subject to condition, conditions one to four and informatives one to three, that consent be granted. Can I see all those in favour of granting consent? Uh, seven. And those against? One. And anybody abstaining? Thank you very much. And that concludes the business of the evening. Thank you very much.